Hello, Christ United Methodist Church friends and family. It's Pastor Jeremiah coming to you with this week's Upper Room devotional. And this week's is titled Trusting God. And it comes to us from Festus Munde from Naroba, Nairobi, Nairobi, Kenya. I got it right that eventually. And every once in a while, we get to see who our authors are. This is Festus here. And uh, he is actually an experienced journalist now and likes to compose choral gospel music. So um, how cool is that to meet Festus today? And to recognize we're so interconnected in the body of Christ that from Nairobi, Kenya, um, we are still connected to somebody's faith journey who is sharing with us. Now, as Festus is talking to us in this devotional this week, he kind of points out that sometimes it's hard to trust God to know what's going to happen. We want to know how, when, who, where, you know, when God will you answer my prayer and how will you answer it? And will it be the way I expect it to or will it not actually ever come to pass? And sometimes when we're struggling with things, we wonder if God even hears us at all. You're like, where are you, God? What? A... Trusting God is hard because God doesn't answer our prayers in ways that are typical to the way we would expect them. And sometimes God's answers are so indirect, they're hard to see. You may wonder, well, why is this bear sitting here next to me? Well, a long time ago, it feels like, but yes, yeah, it was so short a time ago at the same time, we ended up in quarantine during COVID. And one of my first videos early on, I did with this teddy bear next to me. <laughs> and I remember that like it was yesterday. And it was during those times I had all kinds of prayers, like, how are we going to get through this as a church? And how is me sitting here talking into a camera with nobody in the room around me going to help anybody? And, and when will this quarantine end? And how will we survive as a church? And what am I supposed to do about it when I feel so inadequate that I'm not even sure what I'm doing is even going to help anybody. Now, since then, I've done literally hundreds of these darn devotionals, and I'm much more comfortable doing it. The first time I did it, I had to start over and stop the tape so many times. It took me hours just to work up the courage to hit send. And now I do them so regularly that I don't even think about it. In fact, I actually feel much more comfortable doing this than I ever imagined I was capable of. God was answering prayers the, even during that time that I didn't even know how. Like, when will you help me connect? Will this matter? And yet since then, I've had several people comment or message me. Or I meet people at a grocery store or at a restaurant that say, hey, you're that guy that puts out that devotional. I appreciated what you had to say. I'm like, how in the heck did God use this video? How is God using me to help anybody? I'm always so surprised in general that the things that God has me feel led to do even help others. And yet I should be, shouldn't be so faithless. I should know that God is going to use all of our efforts. And, and so it's a struggle for me to trust that God is going to get me where I need to go or help guide me in times as, you know, being a pastor was hard during COVID. It's hard no matter when, but then, you know, how do we get through this time and how do I reach my people? And when I'm sitting in cars and parking lots wondering, how I'm supposed to help somebody who I'm not even allowed to go in and visit. Yet God worked through those things, enhanced our church's ability to work with technology, worked with the church globally to work better through technology and to, to find new ways to meet people in different spaces. And there are so many people that I would have never met had I not engaged devotionals or online social media in the ways that we do regularly now here and regularly now in all churches, churches all over the place. Like it's a whole new medium to reach people and to share God's love. And it's taught us a lot. It's taught me a lot. It's taught our church a lot. And, and now I got a camera in front of me on Sunday mornings and I'm talking to a group of people and an audience on Facebook. And Somehow God has taken these efforts and multiplied them. And really what I needed to do and what I still need to do more often than not is trust that if I am seeking to do the best I can to do God's will and I just take one more step, an action step forward, do as I'm prone to say, the next right thing, those things stack up to something I can look back on and say, oh, that's where God was. Most of us see God best in the rearview mirror. 
In the present, we wonder where God is, and in the future, it's so uncertain, we're not sure how God's going to get it there. But in the past, a lot of us can see how God, God brought us to this place. And if God brought you to the place you're in now, preserved you, protected you, provided for you, brought you to this place, even if you're struggling, even if it's really hard times right now, even if you're afraid or even terrified of the future, and this present moment seems so difficult, you know that God brought you to this place, got you to this, and will get you through this, that God is with us. Now, that doesn't mean God's going to wave a magic wand or, or fix the problem miraculously immediately. God oftentimes works painstakingly slow, reworking with us, through us, and in and through others. And when we re isolate ourselves and don't engage other people, when we don't do the best we can in our current circumstances to just move the ball forward, so to speak, inch by inch, keep doing that next right thing, it's harder and harder to see God. So we take those steps, the next thing that we can do, that next action step towards the future we hope for. And it may be just that we pray, that we just turn it over to God and say, you know what, I'm not sure how I'm going to get where I need to go. I don't know how I'm going to get through this moment, this second, this day, this issue, this tragedy, this sorrow that I might be feeling, this difficulty, whatever it may be. I don't know how, God, but I know you will get me through. That could be just enough in that moment so that God can start preparing the groundwork in front of you. God goes before us. God works in and through us and in and through others around us. And sometimes that requires us just to let go of our expectations, our desires, our plans, and to seek God's good will. I also don't want to sugarcoat it so much to say that God's plan it will ever align up with ours. You know, some of us will suffer and it won't go away. Some of us may not get out of the hospitals. We may not survive a disease or something we're dealing with. Our loved one may not make it. But that doesn't mean God isn't in the midst of it, getting you through it. We have to have eyes with eternal focus. Not so stuck on this present moment that if we don't get what we want now in this worldly place, this here and now, that we just throw our hands up and say, well, God wasn't there. God is not limited by our human concepts of time. God is not limited by our finite reasoning. And I like to think of it in this way, that at some point in some grand eternal moment, we'll see the picture more fully and realize even when things were at their most difficult, even when it seemed like God was the furthest away that he could have ever been, even when it feels like God wasn't listening, and even if we ended up not having anything close to our prayers being answered, that we will be able to see more clearly. Hindsight 2020, looking out across time, beyond time, outside of time, and see that God was there in the midst of it all along. I don't issue this statement to be in any way saying that God brings us cancer to teach us some lesson or that God is teaching us something through pain and suffering, but that doesn't mean that God isn't with us in it teaching us. God didn't give you cancer to teach you a lesson. We are in a broken, fallen world that's out of order with the way God designed it, and yet God is redeeming, working all things to new, bringing all things to glory and goodness, and we can have faith in that. And that God suffers with us. That's the whole idea of Emmanuel. God taking on flesh. God with us. Understands our suffering. Understands our sorrow. Is with us through it. And says, I'm with you. It's okay. This is not the end. This is just this moment. Our faith becomes tested. And we become stretched sometimes to the limit. But we need to know that God too understands that. Didn't visit it upon you to punish you but is instead working with you to get you through it to the eternal outcome, which is God's mercy and love and grace, which surpasses all understanding, encompassing us, encompassing us all, knitting us together in love. The end of the story is already written. God gets what God wants, and that's all humanity, all creation saved, perfected, glorified, back under God's loving embrace. And so no matter what you're facing, know that the end story is one of victory. Christ conquered death in the grave, 
conquered sin and the things that get in the way of God's plan. And so we need not be so attached to this immediate outcome to know that the end of the story already written is glorious, far more glorious than we can ever imagine. Um, Festus kind of reminds us to look at this and say nothing will be impossible with God. Nothing is impossible with God. That's from Luke chapter 1. However, what we have to do is change our mindset to align with God's mindset. Give us eyes to see as you see, God. Give me a will that aligns with your will ought to be our prayer, not a laundry list of things we need God to do. And if God does this, we don't barter with God, then we'll do this. Instead, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven is what we pray and we mean it. Let's look at what Festus says. A brilliant shock of lightning flashed across the pitch dark sky. A deafening thunderclap followed. I trembled, feeling exposed and vulnerable as the light flashed through the cracks of grass. Thatched mud houses where we slept. I wedged myself into a corner to evade the raindrops of a heavy downpour. I momentarily forgot about my hunger, even though I had eaten only porridge for dinner. Sleeping with an empty stomach was common in our family. I was overwhelmed by a feeling of hopelessness. Musse, my prayerful grandmother mumbled, don't worry about our current state. Trust God who created you, for nothing is impossible with God. You will own a decent shelter and eat to your fill. Our devout grandmother, Kima, advised us to work hard and to trust in God. She said God would deliver us. But how? When? I asked. Nonetheless, I believed her. I trusted God and I worked hard. God has been faithful. Despite hardships, I passed my school examinations. I enrolled in a renowned university and graduated with a first-class honors degree. Our family now lives decently, and I am writing a thesis for my master's degree in communication studies. What a testament to God's power. Even when life seems hopeless, we can have faith that nothing is impossible with God. I can't even imagine what our friend Festus was dealing with, living in a hut, trying to hide from rain, just to stay warm with his hungry belly, empty, and grandmother telling him, don't worry, nothing's impossible with God. Just keep believing, just keep having faith. And many of us in our very Western culture here in America would say, well, that's kind of silly to just believe that God is doing this and, and that nothing is changing. You're still hungry. You're still in a hut. You're still sleeping on the ground. But that faith wasn't realized in that moment. We don't even know that grandmother herself has even seen Festus uh, accomplish these tasks. What we know, though, is that grandmother had faith and encouraged Festus to have faith. And that in time, after a long time, after many years, God's will was met. God met Festus's needs and is currently helping Festus do great things in his life for his country, writing choral music and, and going to school and working as a journalism and major and also bringing us a devotion here today. Somehow God reworked everything that Festus was going through to gather us here tonight talking about this. It's incredible what God will take that we're suffering with and rework till good. God didn't put Festus in the hut on the ground, but God got Festus through that time with his grandmother surrounding him with love and people to encourage him and people of faith who would guide and direct him to bring us together today and beyond. Who knows where this video may go? We are those who struggle. We don't know how we're going to get through the present moment, but if we keep believing, if we keep having faith, if we keep taking action steps towards the future we hope for with God's will in mind, we'll end up far better off than we could even imagine for ourselves. God's will for us is beautiful. It's glorious. He's got a glorious plan for you, for me. All we need to do is have faith that that plan will be delivered and it will look far different than we imagine it could be. And that is good because we would limit the blessings God would have for us and most likely sell out for a, more food to eat and maybe a little bit of drier shelter. Festus had a lot going for him in those moments and they challenged him and he grew through them and his faith tested is now stronger than it's ever been. Whatever you're facing, whatever you're dealing with, no God is with you. You're not alone. Like this teddy bear by me, God sits with us, <laughs> getting us through all the things we can't imagine, even things that seem so hard that there is no 
way you're going to get through it. Keep trusting in God. Keep taking that one more step forward. Keep doing that one more actionable, actionable step of faith. And know that this too shall pass because nothing is impossible with God. And that includes bringing us into God's glory at some later date in the future where we're surrounded and embraced with God's warmth and mercy and light in ways that will make everything we're suffering with or dealing with here seem not so important at all. If you're hurting, if you're suffering, no, I pray with you. If you're struggling right now, wondering where God is at, and you're not sure how you're going to get through, just know that and be encouraged that God is with you. Look for God in the unexpected places. Reach out to others. Look for other people of faith who can buoy you up and get you through the long, dark, thunderous night. Know that you are not alone. I leave that with you in Christ's name tonight. Amen. Our prayer focuses those who go to sleep hungry. And I can tell you for a fact that I work with people in all different places. Our church partners with 409 Cares and Community Kitchen and, and St. Louis, Helping Hands of St. Louis. And we work in so many different ways to help our neighbors make sure that they don't go to bed hungry, to make sure that there's food uh, available. And so do so many other churches and outreach and ministry people all throughout Oregon and East Toledo and beyond. Um, we are those who visit the poor and, and feed the hungry and clothe the naked and and, and visit the sick and do what we can. I mean, this is what Jesus calls us to do. And that's a thought that occurs to me as I'm wrapping this up, that sometimes when your burdens are hard and they feel heavy, the best way to unburden yourself is to serve or help somebody else. Incredible as it may seem, our burdens are lightened when we pick up somebody else's and ours don't seem so bad. All right, let's pray. Oh God, help us to believe in your saving power. Help us to be those who trust in you and take one more step, one more right thing. Do that next right thing, trusting that you, God, will deliver us in your time, in your ways, and in ways that go way beyond our understanding. Help us to look for your glory, to align our will with yours. In your name we pray. Amen. See you next week.